as you are well aware, tonight is just a night for people to get information, to learn about um, what lice is, what it isn't. I don't know, put a lot of myths to rest and, and have an opportunity to really get up close and personal and understand it and answer any questions for me. So I have here tonight with us, we have Carrie, who's one of our nurses from our school district. And she will be going through a short presentation with you and then demonstrating how to look through the hair. And um, I was prepared to show it on the big screen because I didn't know how many, but I think people can just stand around and watch. It's not necessary. <laughs> so um, with that, here's Carrie. Carrie, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. I've turned into the resident nurse life expert, so that's why I can speak to you. But I do want to introduce Mary Ann. Uh, Marianne is the district nurse that's actually assigned to the school, so she's the one who deals with the issues that come that happen here. Um, I'm currently working at Fairlands, uh, Moore, and Amazon, so we're a little spread out. Um, there's only a few, so we'll just kind of go casually. If you guys have questions as I go through, feel free to feel free to ask. So can you do I'm going to turn off the front lights just so you guys can see the screen without dressing. Yeah. All right, you can help with connect. I, you guys can hear me okay, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was a teacher before I was a nurse, so I can do my teacher voice, no problem. Um, so our goals tonight are just to share some information, review prevention and treatment guidelines, and answer any questions you guys might have. Um, head ice has been with us since humans evolved. It's been a long time. They have adapted themselves to live with us, so eliminating them really would be pretty much impossible, but we can reduce how often we, they occur. Um, and it really takes a team effort to reduce the incidence of lice. Um, that includes education, um, really reducing the spread. Um, frequent surveillance, surveillance means checking regularly, and we're gonna talk about that a lot. Sharing information and treating them effectively when they do occur is how we can reduce how often we have them. Okay, so test first. Huh? True or false? Head lice can jump. False. False. They can only crawl. They cannot fly or jump. That's good news for us. It would be much harder to control if they could fly or jump. Right. Head lice can survive for several days away from the head. True. False. 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 They will die in about a day if they are away from the head. You guys are good. Did you get that right? <laughs> All people with head lice frequently scratch their head. True. False. 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 You're saying it's false because I said all people, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's false. Actually, um, although scratching is a, is a common symptom you'll, you'll see, um, it takes about six weeks for most people to start scratching once they get their first case of head, of head lice. So they've had it for a long time without scratching. And some people never scratch. They never get sensitized to the head lice, so they never itch, they never scratch. They can have them for a long time without knowing it. It's similar to mosquito bites, how some people are really sensitive and will get big welts and scratch a lot, and some people won't. Head lice can live on hats and in carpets. False. Again, once they're away from the head, they die very quickly. Um, head lice are selective about the heads they live on. Everything's in the ball. <laughs> The trick. <laughs> False. Head lice don't care. Um, they don't care if your hair is clean or dirty. They don't care if you color your hair. Um, and they're not really particular about if you use gel or mousse or hairspray or that kind of stuff. They really just don't care that much. They'll take anybody almost. Okay. So I have some good pictures. Here's one. Okay, so basic facts. Um, general thing that research will tell us is about one in a hundred students each year will get head lice. Um, that number is a very, very fuzzy number. Um, because head lice do not cause any diseases, there is not much effort spent in tracking how often they occur. So that number comes from sales of RID and NICS 
products to get rid of head lice. So how accurate that number is, probably not that accurate. And um, there's a picture of the family. The female is the one that's a little bit bigger. The male is a little smaller. And the little guy there is called a nymph. That's like a child head lice that hasn't turned into an adult yet. And they have six legs. They are tannish to grayish white. They do alter their color a little bit based on the hair that they're in. So they can hide and camouflage themselves a little bit. Females live about four weeks, and again, they die quickly. Um, not a sign of poor hygiene. There's a lot of stigma with getting head lice, and they're not related to that at all. So we are trying to get rid of that stigma so people will share information. They cause no diseases that we know of, so they're not like mosquitoes. They can't spread things. Um, they feed, they bite you, um, inject a little bit of slime and suck out a little drop of blood every few hours. Um, they are most active at night, so sometimes kids who have them will not sleep well and they'll be irritable because it's keeping them up and they might not realize what's keeping them up. Um, and then like I said before, it takes four to six weeks when you get, get them the first time before you start itching. Um, this is one reason why they spread so quickly is because kids will have them for a long time before anybody realizes they have them and they have all that time to spread them around before we figure it out. Um, and a trivia fact for you, um, African Americans have an oval shaped hair shaft and when those lice grab onto the hair, um, the ones in North America are adapted for a round hair shaft. So head lice in North America cannot hold on very well to African American heads, so they don't get them. In other parts of the country, the reverse is true. So it depends on how most of the hair is in that area. Um, these are nits. Nits are the little eggs that they lay. Um, this one is magnifying and blown up a lot. Um, when you see a knit, it's, you can't tell by looking if it's an old knit, a new knit, if there's something in there that's alive, if it's already hatched, if it's old and dead and never hatched. If, without a microscope, you can't tell. Um, the lice lay them very close to the scalp. Um, so within like a half a centimeter is where they lay them. If you find them more than a centimeter away from the scalp, they're not viable, they're not going to survive because they basically incubate from the warmth of the scalp. So without that incubation, they won't hatch. So if you see them a few inches down the hair shaft, they're from an old infestation, not a current one. Um, the gold standard for diagnosing head lice is actually finding a live, crawling um, louse on somebody's head. Um, but they are very hard to find because they run fast and they avoid light, and when you start checking for them, they were trying to scurry and one to the other side of the head. So it is tough if you don't have a large infestation sometimes to find them. Um, often people will confuse them with dandruff, with bits of hairspray, with bits of gel that are left in the hair. Um, sometimes insects get blown into the hair like aphids, and people will find one and they have lice and they don't. Um, when we look at the picture, um, the knit is laid on the side of the hair shaft. It doesn't circle the hair shaft. So if you see something that's kind of even around the hair shaft, it's not a knit. Okay. Also, they are very firmly attached. You cannot move it up and down the hair shaft. It is stuck. The glue they use to hold those things on hold really well. You have to really tug hard to get a knit off. So if you can move it, it's not a knit. Um, a lot of people, when they are taking knits off, will just take a pair of scissors and cut that strand of hair instead of pulling it off. Okay. Um, we will get cases where parents report having lice over and over and over again, and sometimes that's just because they are misdiagnosing it. They think they have lice, but they don't really have lice. Maybe they have a case of dandruff, and then they keep treating it with the lice medication and it irritates their scalp more, so they get more stuff on their hair, more dandruff and things like that, and it could be a problem. Right? Um, here are some, a couple of things that might get mistaken. If you look on the comb, you can see the hair cast. Uh, that's just a piece of hair debris that's there. Um, a DC plug is kind of an oily plug that comes out um, around the hair shaft also. Those are not nits. Those are the ones that are tough to get out. Yeah, they can be tough to get out. 
Okay, and life cycle after a knit is laid, it takes eight to nine days for that egg to hatch, and then it becomes a nymph. And then after it hatches, it takes nine to 12 days to become an adult that can reproduce. The life cycle is important to know when we talk about treating it, because we have to make sure that we get rid of them before they become adults, so we don't start the cycle again. Um, as far as how they go from person to person, the headlights are on people. They are not living in our schools, on buses, in movie theaters. That's not where they are. The children bring them wherever they go. Um, almost always, it takes direct contact, head-to-head -head contact with somebody who has headlights to give it to somebody else. That's actually a really good thing for us because it does help us limit the spread. And you can get head lice by sharing scarves or hats, um, but because head lice are alive, living creatures, they don't leave a nice warm head where they have a good source of food and heat easily. They want to stay there because they're safe. Um, occasionally one will get on a hat or on a scarf and you can pass it from one person to another but it's not the most common way. Um, and there's been a lot of studies done where they look at carpets in classrooms and they don't find them there, so that's good news for our students. The, we want to focus on the most effective ways to reduce the inc incidence, and that's to share information, to check your kids often, and to treat them effectively when they do occur. Uh, really, really important to get rid of the stigma and to have parents tell each other when their kids have head lice. Um, we like them to share with the school, we like them to share with each other, and it's actually a little tricky because you have to remember that your kids have probably had them for six weeks. So you have to go back through <laughs> and try to think of every place they've been for the last six weeks. Um, that's difficult sometimes to remember everybody. Um, relatives are a common source of where they come from. Sleepovers. Um, there was a Girl Scout event a couple of years ago where they all camped out at the fairgrounds there. That caused a whole wave of stuff going on. So it's a lot. And they occur mostly from kids from 3 to 11. That's the highest age bracket. So good news that once you make it out of elementary school, you'll probably see them less. Yes, go ahead. Is there a reason why we do 11? You know, it's their behavior. Once the kids get a little older, they're, they're better about their personal space. The younger kids just aren't so good. They just touch heads more often. Hug each other. They, yeah, they're just... It's, yeah, middle school's possible. It's just not as... Most of the middle school and high school kids who we see that get them have siblings in elementary school. So it does happen, but there's usually a source. Inside the home, very common. Lots of our kids who get them, their parents get them too. Okay? Because that's where you have that kind of close contact, right? You cuddle with, with your kids, it's easy to spread that way. Okay, so our procedures, what we do at school in the elementary, um, everything we do at health services, we have to follow our guidelines that we get. Um, particularly from the public health department and also some state and national organizations. Um, we will check students who have symptoms, so we will have teachers that call the health office and say, oh, Sally over there, she can scratch her head, I'm a little worried, and our health clerk will check and see if they see anything. Um, if we do find head lice on a student, we notify the parents, we give them some information on how to treat, and they have the choice to either pick up the child immediately or to pick up at the end of the school day and begin treatment. Uh, we recheck them when they return to school. Um, mostly that's just to check in, talk to the child, make sure that something happened at home. And then we will recheck in seven to 10 days to make sure the problem is still controlled. And we send a lice letter to the classroom parents where that occurred. Any extreme cases, um, a few times a year in the school district, we will get a kid that the health clerk looks at and goes, oh my goodness, they're everywhere on this kid's head. And in that case, they will call the district nurse and we will intervene um, to immediately talk to those parents and have them come pick up and educate the parents so they know what's going on. 
Um, the district nurses also work with parents who have been unsuccessful in getting rid of the head lice. Our best recommendation is for you to check your kids once a week to catch a problem before it happens. Remember that if you, when you do get a lice letter from school, that's, that information is six weeks old. That kid has been sitting in class with head lights, they've been playing, they've been doing all your activities they do after school, all the Girl Scouts, all everything. That happens, to, whatever happened, happened six weeks ago. So weekly check by parents are our number one thing that we would love to see happen. Um, once you get good at doing a check, and we'll do a demonstration of one at the end of the presentation, but once you get good at doing them, it doesn't take very long. Um, what I do with my daughter is I just, on Friday mornings, I just come in when she's getting ready, and I just offer to brush her hair, and why she's there, I just kind of go through and take a peek and make sure that everything's okay. Um, it's really, it doesn't take too long once you get good at it. The first few times, it takes a little while. Okay, and um, how to check good lighting is important. They are hard to spot. Um, sometimes some blonde hair are really hard to spot because they're light and they hide really good. Um, they are usually found at the nape of the neck and behind the ears, but they can be anywhere. Again, focus on close to the scalp because that's where the nits get laid. Um, the live ones are hard to find at the beginning. Another picture. And here's a picture. This is dandruff in hair. So this is something that could be mistaken for lice. Um, but again, that, the dandruff will move on the hair shaft very easily. You can kind of blow on it and move around. These are nits. So you can see the little tiny little circles on there. Those are old nits because they are further than one centimeter from the scalp. So that's from an old infestation, not a current one. She might have some that are closer to the head too. Um, this is a blown up image of a louse being removed with a knit cone. And we'll show you a knit cone. Um, they're good at removing both the live ones and the nits. So treating effectively, um, if you do find head lice in your household, make sure you check everybody in the household. And if you find them, treat them on everybody at the same time. So don't separate, treat, don't separate, don't treat some people on Saturday and some people on Wednesday. We'll just start reinvesting each other again. And you need to treat the environment as well. Uh, for clothing and bedding, they need to be washed and dried. Anything that was used in the last 48 hours, Remember, the lice die quickly so you don't have to go back, wash everything in their closet, just the stuff they've used in the last 48 hours. Vacuum furniture, wash combs and brushes, you can put them through the dishwasher, that's a good way to do it. And any object that you can't vacuum or wash, you can put in a bag. Um, some places say to keep them for two weeks in the bag, but remember they die pretty quick. Um, do not use the lice con control sprays any kind of fumigation are not healthy for the kids at all. Um, some Nick sells them and Ruth sells them, but they're not recommended. Um, choices and what you want to use to treat. Um, Particulicides, that's a fancy name for the lice shampoo and medications that kill head lice. Um, Over-the-counter Nix is the most recommended by our pediatricians. There are a few prescription products available. Um, the manual method means that you are um, wetting the hair, maybe putting a conditioner on it and using a lice comb and carefully combing out the hair. Um, that's for parents who do not want to put any of the particular sides on their kids' heads. And we'll talk about some over-the-counter ones. Um, the first line treatment. So when kids get head lice for the first time, what the pediatricians will tell you to do is to use the over-the-counter. Um, the, Negative is that they don't kill 100% of the eggs, so you do need two treatments. And if you don't follow the directions, it's not going to work very well. Um, for, these are the directions for NYX because it's the most common one. By the way, we're going to post the PowerPoint so you can get it off the website to go back. Um, main thing with the NYX is that you cannot use a conditioner or a conditioning shampoo before you put it on and you can't use it for several days after. 
Uh, the NYX has a property that will help control lice, has like a residual property to it, and it won't work if you have any conditioner on it. Um, you put it in starting at the back of the neck, leave it on for 10 minutes, rinse with warm water. Um, they suggest you rinse like over a sink so that the medicine just kind of falls off and doesn't go all down your body so you're not exposing yourself to too much of it. So the package directions on NYX will say to repeat if live lice are seen seven days or more later. Um, but the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends always to do a second treatment. Right. The idea is that the first application will kill any live lice and it will kill most of the eggs. And then if you treat again seven to nine days later, you will kill any eggs that survived and hatched before they can become adults and lay more eggs. So if you do the two treat treatments a week apart, you'll cover your bases on any of the eggs that may survive. Um, knit removal, if you do the two treatments and you follow the directions as you're supposed to, knit removal is optional because the knits that are left will not be viable. Um, the vast majority of our parents remove all the knits because they don't want nits in their kid's hair. Um, and it makes it easier to check later if you want to make sure that there's no active thing going on. If you've taken out all the nits, you'll know if there are new ones. Um, but it is very time consuming and it's not required for treatment. Okay. So the manual method, again, is if you don't want to use a particular side, it requires a lot of time, a lot of diligence. You have to do it at least three times a week for at least three weeks to make sure you've completely gotten rid of them. So it is an option. Um, there are a lot of alternative treatments that people will talk about. Um, Can I ask a question about the manual? So while you're yes. going through those treatments, do you need to continually vacuum and do the washing? Yes, you need to continue vacuum and do the washing, everything because you haven't used anything to get rid of the live ones. You're relying on your combing to get rid of the live ones. And because they move around, right. you're, yeah, you're focused on So them. how often would you vacuum? I mean, if you're saying every three days, would you just vacuum the same day? Yeah, I would do it every three days. Just uh, three, three times a week. When you do the treatment, I would vacuum after and wash it. Okay, so alternative treatments, mayonnaise is a common one. People will put mayonnaise all over the kid's hair. Sometimes they'll wrap the head in saran wrap after they put the mayonnaise on and let them sleep that way overnight. <laughs> um, that doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 probably well conditioned and their hair is probably nice and soft the next day, but it's not going to do anything for the lice. You have to wash your hair at dawn to get the grease out. <laughs> Tea tree oil is another one. That one is not well studied. There's been a few studies that said it might be effective, but you have to be careful with it um, because if it's even though it's natural, if you have it in a strong dose, it can be dangerous. Um, there's a method called the Nubel method, um, which was developed by a doctor on the peninsula. Um, and that's you take Cetaphil and put it all in and comb it out and then you blow dry it until the hair's dry. Um, that one has not been well tested either. Um, some people will shave the kid's head. That works. <laughs> um, traumatic, especially for the girls. So we don't recommend that, but that, that alternative method does, does work. Occasionally, somebody will put something like gasoline on their kid's head and do something really dangerous to try to get rid of them. So we like to stick with the uh, safe approved methods. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. Okay. Um, what's the latest information on I went through the shampoo thing twice and all that, and it didn't work, and our pediatrician said that a lot of them are becoming um, immune to the medicine, the shampoo medicine? Yeah, so resistance does develop, does develop, unfortunately. So we'll talk about the options um, if you do get resistance. Um, just like, you know, the bacteria will develop resistance to the antibiotics, the head lice can develop resistance to the um, over-the-counter products, especially because that's what's used most often. Um, most pediatricians, the guidelines are if you follow the directions exactly and you treat twice and you're still seeing live lice on the kid's head, that's a sign that there's resistance that's developed. 
they will move on to a prescription product. Um, the goal is to limit the use of the prescription product so that they don't develop resistance to the prescription products. Okay. So there are, these three are kind of the most common ones. Glyce just came out. Um, that one is a 10 minute treatment. Um, this research study, they didn't remove any of the nits and they were 76% were lice free. Um, Natroba is another one. Um, one to two treatments. Also, they say that nit removal is not necessary with that one. And then the Ovid is um, almost 100% ovicidal, which means it kills the eggs. And that one can catch fire though, and the kid has to sleep with it overnight, so physicians like to avoid that. There haven't been any cases where any kids have been harmed by it, but you can imagine they're still a little reluctant on that one. So we don't see it. Just a question. So, I mean, 76 percent lice free doesn't seem like it would get you there. Yeah, it doesn't seem like enough, does it? Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, it seems to me that the best thing to do is really you can use these things, but you really should be doing the manual method too. Otherwise, we could be you could be a mom and only most things are a combination. Yeah. It's really you know you have to be diligent, and after you treat, you have to keep keep checking. You need to check you know, for several weeks afterwards to make sure your problem is really taken care of. So, I think it's the checking, really just following up and making sure it's successful. And we meet, the nurses meet regularly. We meet about four times a year with a group of local pediatricians. And they have not reported to us that they're seeing a lot of resistance to the over-the-counter products in this area. They seem to be mostly successful. And if you can stick with the over-the-counter products, that those are the safest products. That's why they're over-the-counter. Um, we would recommend doing that. But if you do follow directions and you're still seeing live ones. Also, I will note, though, that like with the NICs, it takes several hours to kill the lice. So if you treat and then look right away, you might see some crawling around, but they will usually die afterwards. So you don't want to try it immediately. It does take a little, a little ways. So additional ways to reduce incidence. Um, as I said, most of the transmission occurs from direct head-to-head -head contact, but it can happen from sharing hat scarves and things like that. So why do it, right? We try to teach the kids not to share that stuff. What about the backpacks and stuff? Like when you're in school, you can take backpacks side by side and just pile backpacks on top yeah. of each other. Again, it's rare because if when when the louse falls off a head a head and lands on a backpack, it's almost always one that's dying. That's why it's falling off. So the risk is very low. But anything we can do, I mean, if you have a bad thing going on, you do whatever you can do to reduce it. But it's the head to head, whatever we can do to reduce that. That's why girls get them more than boys. Because girls do things like they lay on the bed and read together. You know, boys are all throwing the ball and tumbling and they just don't do as many things like that. What, um, from a teacher perspective here, if they find that they have a lot of natural cases in the classroom, what are the things that they can do? You know, in a classroom where kids are sitting in desks and tables, it's a very rare thing for lice to get transmitted. And we strongly encourage that teachers not have pillows and couches in their classrooms. Um, not just for head lice, but for all sorts of germs. Any kind of surface that you can't clean really well, um, as far as spreading the flu and colds and head lice, we would like to see those all be gone. That would probably be the most important. Okay, so if you treat and it doesn't work out, um, these are some of the reasons. One, you didn't eliminate the lice. And we talked about that. It could be resistance, it could be the directions were not followed. Um, other possibility is the child was reinfested. So you took care of it in your house, but either they found a new place to pick up some new ones or they got them from the same place they got them for the first time. So we had a case with a family in our district that um, every four to six weeks, their kids were getting head lice and talked to the parents. They were very diligent. They followed all the steps. They got rid of them each time. And four to six weeks later, they would get them again. Do it all over again. Four to six weeks later, they would do that again. Okay. So the mom kept track of everything the kids went, and talked to all the parents, and still, um, as it turns out, where were the kids going every four to six weeks? 
they were going to spend the weekend at grandparents' house. So what had happened was probably the first time the kids had them, they were nice and shared them with grandma. And nobody thought to check grandma <laughs> and all this. So every time the kids went back, grandma shared them right back. And on and on. So it happens and it can, like I said, six weeks is a long time. It can be hard to figure out where, where they're getting them. Um, so again, either the close contact was not treated or it's a new source of infestation. So if you keep getting them again, then you have to figure out, did I not treat them well? Are they still in the house? Or did they just get reinfested? Can be tough. And again, misdiagnosis, sometimes they, people think they're getting them again and again and they're not. Okay, so here's our case study. Your child's best friend has head lice. They have had several sleepovers and play dates in the last six weeks. So you get the phone call, somebody shared the information, they did what they're supposed to do. What do you do? Ideas? Check, yes, a careful check, a very careful check. Not a quick check, but a very careful check like we'll show, okay? Um, if you find them, what do you do? Oh, we have an answer in the back, yes. Treat them? Treat them, yes. Before you treat them, though, we're going to do that. Who else are you going to check? The family, everybody. Everybody in the household. You're going to check everybody in the household. Wash the shoes. Okay. Okay. So you're going to check, um, if they're not there, you don't find them, you're going to check again, okay? Because if your kids go to a sleepover on Friday night and you check them on Sunday, you're probably not going to find anything, even if they've been infested, because they probably just have one pregnant louse on their head that you're probably not going to see, okay? But if you wait and you do your weekly checks in a couple weeks, then you'll see the evidence. Because again, it's hard to find, if you just have one on your head, it's really hard to find it. So you have to keep checking. Um, if you do find it, check all the members, begin treatment on everybody at the same time, wash all the clothes and laundry in the 48 hours, vacuum, notify people, and don't forget to retreat in seven to 10 days. That was a lot of advice. Is everybody itchy? Yes. <laughs> totally normal to be itchy. Everybody gets that way when we talk about it. <laughs> No, you need help to check yourself. You need somebody to do that for you because you've got to get behind your ears and in the back here. You... I know people who will take the lice comb in the shower and well, they'll actually comb through their hair, which is hard to do if you don't have a mirror to just make sure you get it off. But they, they do that too. But you can feel them. What do you have the girlfriend later? If you're, when you're, when you're checking hair, if you pull down, it feels like you have, like there's a little knot in your hair. Like the one single strand of hair knotted itself just one time. That's, it feels like a bump like that. So she's checking. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> The last time that we actually had lice in our house, my mm -hmm. middle school brought it in. And initially I didn't think it was lice because I was able to actually move the knit up and down the hair shaft. And then I thought, okay, that's not it. That's like one of those strange things. And then as I started going through and realized, and then when I saw the live one, it's like, oh my God, it is actually. So it it may not be always, but I, I've been able to pull it. It's, it's not easy, but you can. Yeah, they will. Like that little, you can pull them because that's you know that phrase nitpicking, right? That's yeah. what it comes from. It comes from picking nits off people's heads. <laughs> So, so, you know that. so you can, but you have to touch to get it down. It's to, you can't, you know, yeah. like That's damage. Like, yeah. yeah, like I said, you can just cut off that hair strand. Uh, yeah. No, I was just going to say, so um, it was interesting your comment about they usually don't transfer from like dress up clothes and stuff because my daughter goes to aftercare and so every day I pick her up, she's got some outfit on from the drawer. <laughs> And so I've always been concerned that that's, you know, a source and, you know, it's a tough subject to broach with the right. program. So oh, the hot and stuff in there. Well, yeah, this so is how likely are the dress up clothes to be an issue? Is it more than, like, hugging on each other? It's way more the hugging. Way, okay. way, way, way more. It is possible with the dress up clothes, but it's just not as likely. It would, you know, if you're, if we look at a kid that has, you know, we look down and there's like a hundred on his head, right? 
then we pull that kid immediately because if you have that many, then the chance goes up. But because of the hygiene practices in North America, that's a rare thing. In parts of the world where they don't comb their hair every day and do that stuff, people will get infestations like that. We don't see it here, so. So what happens like happen. in a kid's club situation where it's a place that um, a child spends a great deal of time just like at home, right? Right. So they should technically be treating kids' club like they would the home, vacuuming and washing things. Is that they do vacuum you know? kids' club? Yeah. Yeah, and they will vacuum if they get a case. They will vacuum the sofa that's in there. Yeah. So that is the policy. Like yeah, if, if it's found in. Okay. Yeah. We we again we get parents who will you know call up and demand that we get the exterminators out to fumigate the place. And <laughs> that call comes often. You laugh, but that call comes <laughs> often. And that doesn't do any good. Yeah. Um, the vacuum is what will work on the sofa. Well, the vacuum works at home. Right. Exactly. And is there a same, similar policy for if it's found in a specific classroom if a child can identify as having headlights? Is there a way that they... Again, there shouldn't be any sofas in the classroom. They're not found in carpets. <laughs> so, <laughs> sofas. Yeah. We would, yeah, we'd like to see so in okay. Often the sofas, though, do have slip covers on them. That, that's an improvement, but how often are the slip covers? But then the slip covers come off a lot. I would agree with or that. Or a lot of leather yeah. And the, and the ones that fall off are the ones that are old and dying, so they're not like as likely to. You know, I struggle with the shampoo thing because then, my daughter has an ungodly amount of hair, and so I had to use like two bottles yes. to sit and then you know try to get it all in her hair. I think that's where. Yes. Some families will try to split a bottle, and that's one reason why it doesn't work. Like they won't get rid of them because they'll try and use the on this kid and half on that kid. And you really need a full bottle. And sometimes two have this long hair. So I have heard of show. people using the mayonnaise thing and the saran wrap. So they can't be suffocated on the head, is that? No. Okay. You can't, you can't suffocate them. That's so the, that's the, the stuff handles the bag and get thrown in the garage for a week and that will. Yeah, because again, if they're they're not, they're the, the nits aren't going to be incubated if there happen to be a nit. So they're not going to ever hatch if they're not close to the scalp for heat. And you know, they feed every few hours. They don't last very long. So all of that information you know about, like, put hairspray in, put gel in, that's all? That's <laughs> dousing You know, I think, it, I think that came from the thing, what I talked about where African Americans, they don't get them much mm -hmm. here. Um, I think people first assume, from what I read, that, that it was the hair products that that's African Americans that were using. Mm -hmm. That's why they didn't get that. So then people started to think, oh, well, I'll just put gel in my hair, and then I won't get them either. But it's not about the hair products. It's about the shape of the hair shaft. So. Carrie, can, can you give lice to your pet? No, pets cannot spread They have a different kind. Yeah, they have and pet lice don't come to human. Well, I know a lot of kids will snuggle with their dog yeah, or no, lay on their dog. They, don't, so. no, they are not a source of transmission. Oh, goodness. So you talked about the color of the knit, so that is determined by the hair color, with yeah. the color of the knit? They or seem to be able to camouflage themselves and change up slightly, yeah. like in the blonde hair they, they, they look lighter. They're more like a like white stuff you see looking than dark hair. It, when I check my kids, I have a much harder time on Carly than I do on my other daughter who's got darker hair for whatever yeah. reason. For hair. So on my hair, they would look a little lighter. I mean, they would be. <laughs> they would probably be a little darker on your hair. Because they would be like, so they try to blend in. Can you go They're back to the picture of the louse? So that Do you want the knit or the louse? Well, I think the louse, just so people can <laughs> see what it is. Okay. The knit, I think we saw. Yeah. But I want to see the colors. What about carrots? <laughs> 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 And they always look like that with the larger. Yeah. What is that's that? what they look. That's a female. Abdomen. The females are a little bigger. They're apparently pregnant all the time. Too. <laughs> <laughs> they just have to have one interaction and then they're pregnant for like life. <laughs> oh, no. Go back. There's dandruff. And so you talked about a flea comb or, I mean, is that yeah. the type of comb you use? That's it. So you can get, they sell knit combs. Um, the metal ones are the better ones. 
they are. Super space. Very, very cool. And it has a serrated edge as well. And you have to go in right close to the scalp and pull through. Um, you can also use flea combs that you get at the pet store. Those, those, those work as well. The key is that the, the teeth are super close together. So where would you find them? Like where to buy it? Yes. And um, you can, you know, you can look online. You can go to the drugstores have them where they sell the the medicines. The Nix and the Rid. Do you want me to turn the lights off? This one is called Niche Free Terminator. I've, I've heard from know. Kelly that it's a good one. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> they really have to be close. The other thing about using those combs is you can't just comb this way. You actually have to take the hair and comb it from the side, each side, and out from underneath because they could be on any yeah. side of the yeah. hair yeah. shaft. That's a really good one. My skin so, is it, it does take a while. Mm -hmm. the best, well, I'll show it in a minute. Yeah. The best way is to section off the hair. Okay. Yeah. It's a process. You know, they're interesting because, you know, <laughs> from a medical standpoint, they don't spread disease. They're really not, you know, that big of a deal. But from a time perspective of how long it takes if you get them in your house to get rid of them, they're a huge deal. And from an emotional aspect, you know, it's very emotional when your kids get these. Even though you know in your head that you know, it's not anything you did, it's not anything they did, it still can be very emotional. So, other questions? Yeah, more questions. So, I just and I apologize for this, but I just keep I keep going back to this like seventy eight percent thing, the prescription thing. So I'm assuming that the COVID OTC stuff is less than that. So, if you do end up getting lice, then it seems to me that the only way the only way, the best way to ensure that you're going to get rid of it is to also come out all of it. Because if I'm only getting eight out of 10 bugs, right, with whatever method I'm using, then I'm still got two running around laying more eggs. It seems like I don't know how you ever break that cycle if you don't come out all the nets. You have to do what you feel comfortable with. And like I said, most parents remove all the nets. And that's the method that they go with. Okay. But really, it's the checking. You have to keep checking. Really and that was with one treat. That was with one treatment on the prescription. You know, if you did two treatments with that prescription during the week part, then your, your percentages would go. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Kelly has volunteered to be our hair model. If anybody would like to stay to. Do a hair check on Kelly. It would be lots of fun. <laughs> um, the other thing I was going to say about the check Oh, you mentioned earlier about how you check your daughter on Friday. And even in, yeah, I think it's important that we. Oh, okay get good at homing regardless of whether there's an active infestation because that is one of the key things. And the last two times that I found stuff in my kid's hair, it was such a brand new case, it could have been there for less than a week because I was checking regularly and I barely even found the live ones and it was just because I started finding the knit. So it was super brand new. Um, so that's key too. It doesn't it doesn't change the amount of work you have to do in terms of laundry and vacuuming and all that, but at least it's peace of mind that you've got less to actually get out of there. Right. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the lice letters are a double-edged sword because we send them and then people get the idea that, oh, if there's no letter, then there's no lice here. Mm -hmm. But there's always lice here. <laughs> <laughs> in any school day of the school year, if we school. went and checked, the kids in this school, we would find headlights in this school on any day of the year. Okay. Um, so, sending the lice letters, you know, consider it just a reminder that you should be doing the, the, the weekly checks. Do not consider it to be, if I get a letter, then I'll check. Okay. Our fear with the letters is that people will only check when they get to them by that time. It's Um, schools in the district that maybe send out reminders to, uh, to yeah. the classroom, you know, hey, let me check this week, you know, it's on Friday, I go find it, 
that's, that's, that's just something you know, to Sometimes it'll go out in the, the PTA parent newsletter. Sometimes we did a bunch last year with um, when we went through a whole process of looking at, at, at our procedures. But the fact is that we would have to send that every week. Like, because you should check it every week. So, you know, it's really a constant. Unfortunately, we just have to consider that our kids are coming here any day to pick it up, so we might as well just start getting used to doing yeah. the routine. But, like, but like in theory, like theoretically, in vacuum, you could get rid of all the lights and not have a. I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking the question because you're saying it's always around. It's not existing somewhere, it's just happening on our heads. It's, it's well, just going from head to head. Yes. Okay. Until the, you know, child in the second grade classroom went to stay at their cousin's house who mm -hmm. lives out in the county where they didn't do it and then right. boom, you'd have a guy. So we're never going to get right. And a laboratory can be baby. And a laboratory can be baby. Three people by three if we, you know, like incubated them, right? But okay, but we can't do that because this is not a full jar. <laughs> it's really, it's that six weeks period that people have them and don't know. It's with six weeks where the kids are interacting and going and going to summer camps to bring kids from all over the state together in one place. Yeah. Let them spread their lights and send them home <laughs> to their own places, Bye. right? Come home with some East Coast lights. Yeah. <laughs> They're a little nice. They're different. And um, you asked about the, this brand. This is one that's really good and I can show you. It's knit free. Terminator. Okay. <clears throat> and you can take down the website is on the back if you want to look at that's the phone number and there's the address. So, so then they don't sell those in the store. When you have it, you're going to start picking it up. It was down. Yeah, it was down. Always put the people down, down. and then you want to grab like a good tissue. So it's all one. It's like a tissue. 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 Brian, why don't you get checked? No. You don't have much here. You want to get checked in. I got my gel bar. I haven't checked you. I haven't checked you in a while. Can I see your guys' crossword? No. I had my own. No. We have PTA meeting tomorrow. So I'm going to ask them. Okay. Invest in that project. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A quilting light with that big magnifying glass and a light. Yeah. So when we're checking them in the office, we can, it's well lit and magnified. I was going to go that I had my pillow now. So you can have those. And the light that That's the only way I got to the back of the door. I checked I've checked probably a hundred heads after they've gone to knit with. And I've only found knits on one kid after they had a they're, they're way better. So, yeah, than yeah. I'm like, but, so you can still do yeah. My daughter just spread so much hair today. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah. Yeah. you don't need it. I know they sell them. I can see them. But yeah, it took her two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she would have taken me eight. Knock on wood. Yeah, it was yes. fun. She was amazing. So. Hey, Adam, how do I make this go up there? Do you want to? I know I do it with Apple TV. I guess I'll just edit this. How do you make this connect? You look good, Kelly. Want to see you? Hmm? You look good. Because you know what? She started backwards of how I was doing it. And you know, everybody who does them kind of has their own method. Do you want me to like get up in there? It's important that you yeah. do it the same way right over the time. Top. So you don't miss anything. And then, and then, yeah. 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 And I always do. Like, I always have the kid, like, put your head down. And I always separate mm -hmm. the hair. And I always start at the back. Now, of course, when I'm checking at school, once I find them, I stop. I mean, I don't have to. I want to count them and get a whole map of where they are in the head. So I do it. I have them separate, and I start at the back, and then I do behind the, behind the um, ears. So. Kelly, I'm sure, can give you I the do it. I do it differently. I do it from, from the, the top. top of the head. Yeah. And I, I kind of um, will take one section at a time. Like, I'll grab this section here and pin the rest back. And then I'll stop. Start from up here. My kids have typically had it in this area, not in the back of the head or behind the ears. And then I just go down section by section and then grab the next one and 
put this piece off so I kind of know what I've already checked. Okay. So when I'm checking, um, a nice wooden stick is good. And what you do is you just slide it down so that you get a very thin layer of hair and you just slowly move it across. So you're just like that. Getting just a tiny bit so you could see if there's any nits at the base of the hair. I don't see any nits. That's good. <laughs> so you don't use the knit comb to check? You can use the knit comb to check. I like to do a visual check, but you can use the knit comb to check. I'm better at checking than I am at combing, so I always check first, and if I see anything, then I comb. And combing for me tends to pull on my hair. Marianne, can thank you. I'd love to say. You want to be checked? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's and I move. Good. I just keep moving. I move all the way across. Just keep the going over. And then when I then I will have the students with their head like this. We all have and to I'm put our head, head on the table. And oh, yeah, we can't do that. Is that helpful or not? Is that like helpful or not? No. What? Sorry. The Sorry. other thing to know about those checks, like the research yeah. shows that when, when you just have volunteers come in and do that kind of stuff, they are wrong like 70% of the time. Hmm. So like they tell people they yeah, have like Until just a few years ago, we used to have volunteers do the well, right. so that's like, quite, like, I can remember when I was in elementary school, like, lining up at the nurse's office with my whole class, and they mm -hmm. went and shucked all our heads. Mm -hmm. so, is that, that, so the research yeah, no, shows yeah. that those kind of checks do not reduce the incidence of lice in schools. And I think you can kind of tell that, you know, when they do that, they estimated that the nurse or whoever was checking had less than a minute per student right. to check. And it takes a lot. It takes more than a minute to check. So, right. Um, the research has said that that's not a good use of our time and to spend our time on more education and it's just a, not a good use of classroom time because it doesn't work. And as kids who scratch too, you'll sometimes see little scabs because they've itched and you know broken the skin. And I just like you just go through it slowly and slowly. <laughs> And so then I would do this side, and then I would turn her over and make her do the other side. I go this side next, and then we do the same thing behind the ears. And then, that's a good sign of I haven't found anything yet, and then I start at the top. And I just separate the hair again, and I just start going through a little tiny section of hair at a time. Yeah. Does that make sense? Any questions? Yeah. If you know, when you have an incident where you're really checking and removing nits as you go, you put a movie on that the kids love. And you kind of make an evening of it. So with boys, with, when they're wearing their hair shorter, I mean, the best check is, is obviously not going to be this intense. Boys are way easier. I had to get you on camera. In so many ways, they're easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even comparable. Yeah. So really, like, just almost like a visual. I mean, if they're wearing it pretty short. Yeah, boys, we go through, we go through that. So boys are 